What's going on, peeps? It's Wrath here, hanging out today, playing some more Idle Heroes. Uh, we're gonna be on the mid-tier account, not the mid-tier account, my bad, the PvP-ish account today because, one, check out that hot new emblem, it's got the Aspen skin we've got to talk about today, but we've also got a bait over here we get to play around with a little bit, so... That'll be something. Um, so anyways, starting things out, let's kind of look at the events real quick, do a brush over, and then we'll jump in and test out the new bait. It's going to be great. So any hoodles, <clears throat> let's jump into it. The value packages have been buffed. Um, you're like, what do you mean? You now get, I think it was, a, you used to get 80 regular casino chips with the value packages. They pretty much doubled it now, which I, in all honesty, it makes sense. The The rewards for the, the Wishing Fountain event is so bad that there's no reason it should be like an expensive completion anyways. Um, but, boop, this is where you snag that Aspen skin down here for 70 bucks. Normally I don't buy things like that, but I figured, you know what, what the crap, for the content, I'll waste some dirty monies, so make sure you watch those ads. So I can keep wasting my monies. <laughs> Many hoodles. Um, we got the new Aspen skin. It is super duper hot. It's like, it kind of reminds me of Monster Hunter World. If you guys haven't watched any of those things, if you're watching those too. Um, but dude, he look, you can't click on him. I was trying to make him do an attack. He can't. Um, but it looks like some kind of dragon, dude. I am, I'm into it, man. That looks awesome. I'm big fan. That's why I bought it. I, if it would have looked stupid, I'd been like, nah, I'm good. But that one had to be done. Um, but also, we've got the Wishing Fountain event obviously going on, duh. If you're buying Wishing Coins, it's obviously Wishing Fountain time. And believe it or not, it's actually not a terrible event. Now, Rose is not the greatest hero in the world. He isn't a bad hero for PvE support teams, though, so don't overlook him. He definitely has utility there. Um, buffing your teammates' attack, reducing enemy damage, and also reducing enemy armor. Pretty all-in-one package for PvE support, so like I said, don't overlook Rose. He's actually not bad. Um, but the big thing I love about these events... 240 wishing coins to complete, and you snag out 8 orbs. Um, the super chips aren't super important, but 8 super chips can still land you some things. Could land you a profit orb, a heroic summon or two, a few million gold. There are things that come out of that, so it's not a waste in my opinion at all. Um, a lot of people talk about, oh, it's not worth the gym investment. It, in my opinion, this is one of the easiest events to complete, and because it's so easy to complete, even for free-to-play players, this one's not so bad to do, because you can get a lot of your wishing coins for gold in the Aspen dungeon um, and stuff like that it does it's not a terrible it's not a terribly hard event to complete and it rewards pretty decently for what you put into it um, you know you get 4,000 gems worth of profit orbs that's a pretty substantial reward right there in itself and like I said it's not that hard to complete so you know don't be afraid to spend a little bit of your gemages buying some of these wishing coins because it's it's not a bad deal it's definitely not a bad deal um, not to mention not on top of that, you're also going to get everything that you spin for. We can do a double completion if you wanted to. Probably won't. Um, but as you spin your, your wheel, you're going to grab, over the course of the full event, millions of gold. You're also going to get four-star hero shards, which are important. Potential five-star heroes, although probably not as many. But the big thing I like from these events is actually these right here. And you might be like, well, why in the crap would that matter to you? Those things suck. They do. Um, but they're fantastic for fodder. So you get to use those to upgrade your um, artifacts you actually want to upgrade. And this is one of the only places in the game you get these things in mass in an event. Um, now, of course, you do get them every day from your campaign, just going through and grabbing your loot. But generally, you're going to get the, uh, the uh, yellow ones, which obviously aren't nearly as good. Um, so don't overlook the Wishing Well event. It does have a lot of utility um, for progress. So, I mean, not like big team upgrades, but it does add into certain things. Um, but also, we got the shelter mission going on. This is probably what most people want to talk about for a little bit of time. We're not going to go crazy in depth on the heroes. Um, as always, totally neglect these last two. There's very little reason to ever, ever, ever get these. I mean, you got to throw away 2,000 gems and two dark heroes to get one. And they're almost always mediocre units. Sleepless is not a great unit. Gurky is not a great unit. Um, so, bleh, not worth. As for the other things, let's talk about them. Old Ormus. Old Ormus recently got a little bit of a rework. He's way better at healing now, which is fantastic. Um, however, I would still say when it comes to the end game, he doesn't have a huge amount of places he's going to work. Um, but for the early to mid game, he'll work in almost any team as a dedicated healer. He's not going to be the best in slot healer for PVE or anything. He doesn't have any attack boosts that come with him like a bell rain would. Um, so he's not like the tippy top tier of the tippy top tier healer healers or anything, but he's definitely not bad. Has a lot of healing and his healing. Oh, well, five star is not really a great way to look at it. We'll look at these dudes over there in their 10 star form a because 10 star forms look way hotter and B 
because I want to do it that way. So <laughs> that's what we're going to do. Ormus. Ah, there you go. Big Daddy Ormus looking better now. Looking way better. Um, But his heals got a huge buff, like I said. The rescue marks are pretty handy. As long as something doesn't one-shot you and kill you completely, the rescue mark can trigger and save your life by a pretty substantial amount of healing. Which is good. He has a boost to his heal effects now, so his heals are actually even stronger than they were before. His basic attack is a heal, which, again, that's never really a bad thing. Um, just all around, a much better healer than he used to be. I would still probably recommend, if you're going for a PvE-specific team with lots of damage, um, that you should probably run a Vesa instead of Ormus. She won't have the same amount of heals, or the like the clutch healing, but she will still have much better damage output than Ormus will, so she'll kind of support your team a little better in that regard. And also, I would definitely recommend um, ditching Vesa later in the game for a Bell Rain to get the attack buffs stacked on top of the heals as well. So, Ormus, great early mid-game hero, has some use in um, late game PvP teams, like the really top end Redemption Auras. Not that I'm ever gonna have one of those, or you probably won't either, but if you do, he works there, and you probably already know he works there. So anyways, that's Ormus. Um, next up would be Corpse Demon. Oh, we also, look at that Bade. Oh. Bade, oh, he's so hot now. Such a hot dude, he's got a little bit of hair. Not bad for a guy that's obviously like 14 billion years old. I mean, he's a skeleton, and he's got hair. So he's going places. But anyways, not important. Corpse Demon, talk about him real quick. Eh, eh, look at that balance. Look at that balance. Oh, he's like a ballerina. Ballerina Corpse Demon. What's going on? Um, but Corpse Demon's not a terrible unit. He's not used a whole lot in a lot of teams because he is... I mean, he's got a very, I guess you'd say, niche role. And the niche role does not work well in PvP. So, eh. And when it comes to PvE, there's better tanks that deal more damage. But when it comes to things like the Aspen Dungeon, Corpse Demon is not a bad guy. He has a pretty solid amount of crowd control, not just with his active skill, which is a really high chance, 70% chance to freeze frontline enemies for two rounds, which isn't bad. He also heals himself by a percent of his total HP. Being that this guy has a buttload, absolute buttload of HP when you build him with like a withered armor, that right there can heal him for a stupid, stupid amount of health. It's just ridiculous. Um, but also his first passive here, whenever he gets hit by anybody, he has a chance to crowd control him for two rounds, which is really annoying. So when it comes to the Aspen Dungeon, pairing those two together, he can take down a large amount of waves without dying. His issue is he has no damage. He has very little damage. So when it comes to any kind of healing wave, he'll get stuck. So you got to have someone to break waves for him. But in terms of a main Aspen unit, he's not terrible at it. Um, also, he's immune to being frozen, which is definitely nice. And his last deal, when he falls below half health, he gets a three round 20% total HP buff heal. So he heals an insane amount on top of what his active skill heals him for. He becomes pretty difficult to kill. That's, that's kind of Corpse Demon's thing. So when it comes to the Aspen dungeon, solid. Tower of Oblivion, solid guy. I mean, he's, he's got the crowd control, he's really hard to kill, he works there, definitely gonna work there. When it comes to boss fighting, he's pretty useless, and that's why you don't see him in a lot of PvE teams, because you kind of want someone that can split the middle of the road and be like, he does okay in the tower, but he also is gonna do pretty good for me in boss fights. Corpse Demon just tanks, that's all he's gonna do in a boss fight, he has no ability to strip attack or anything like that, he just gets punched a lot. Um, and when it comes to PvP, Freeze isn't necessarily a super potent um, crowd control effect anymore because there's not there's mainly just him and Jara. Ice Blink doesn't get used anymore. Um, but I mean, he doesn't hold up this big HP, which while it's nice, when you face somebody like Valkyrie who can burn you with huge amounts of dots, your HP doesn't really matter then. You have Aidens and Aspens dropping just wicked amounts of damage. Um, I don't think he's nearly as effective. Now, I'd love to see a Ruin team that utilized a Corpse Demon or two um, for that Freeze crowd control. Might be kind of fun to see, but of course, um, that's a, it's a very expensive investment to try to build one. So, there's Corpse Demon for you. Pretty solid unit all around for early and mid game, but when it comes toward the later game, or if you're really trying to focus on your boss damage, he's not going to be that great. Moving over. We got Queen. <laughs> Queen. Queen. The four-armed lady with four swords of doom. Queen. Now, I haven't built a lot of queens. I've built a lot of them to like 6 star and 9 star for food. I've never really used a lot of them. I've seen some people who do like her though. They, um, she does pretty solid PvE damage because of her bleed when she hits 10 star, but she's also pretty nice for reducing crit and crit damage on enemies, which means she can provide utility for your team in boss fights, especially bosses that really rely on crit and crit damage, like scaries, things like that that are really nasty. They start building up those skill damages and it just gets nasty when they crit on you. It's just pretty much game over. Um, she's pretty handy for those kind of fights. Um, 
However, when it comes to most content, like when you look at PvP, I mean, yeah, early and mid game you can get away with things like Queen, but when you start getting people that have solid crowd control lineups, um, big heavy burst damage from Valkyries and things like that, you're not going to see Queen do very well. She does get kind of crapped on. Actually, I think we have somebody in the guild who's rocking an E3 Queen right now, and that was one of his biggest complaints. Um, I'll know the name when I see it, probably, maybe, perhaps, maybe not. King Darius. Boom, I knew it. I'm, look at me. Look at me knowing names of people. Uh, but he's rocking the E3 Queen. Also E3 Cthulhu. Um, but he's so far been pretty unimpressed with her PvP performance. Of course, PvE, she does pretty well. Um, so that's kind of her thing. She's kind of like a PvE unit. Does all right there. Wrong button. Get back over here. Boop, boop, boop. Pretty decent boss damage. Not really a great Aspen unit. Not really a great, uh, great PvP unit. So it's kind of one of those things like she's, she's definitely a mid-tier unit all the way around. Um, but an easy build. You do get a lot of queens. My my mid my uh my newest account has like eight queens already. It's just ridiculous. You get them like candy. Um, but anyways, with that, that brings us over to Starlight, who we just talked about not long ago. Boop. Uh, the person who never looks. It, oh, oh my gosh, she opens her eyes. Is that new? Could have swore she never opened her eyes before. Whatever. Primarily spends her days not looking at things because that's how you do things. Um, but. Got a nice little buff from where she was before. A little bit better crowd control on her basic attack. I'm not sure why that's the icon. But it's the icon, I guess. I don't know. What ifs? Um, she has a decent amount of crowd control with her basic attack for early and mid-game PvP. Not a big deal. For late-game PvP, she doesn't hold a candle to Valkyrie. And when the new hero drops, obviously it's going to replace her as well. Her damage isn't bad. Um, and it can scale, obviously, with things like Heart Watcher and Sigmund, so she can hit decently hard in boss fights, um, but the problem with her boss fighting is she doesn't really have any healing unless your team dies, um, and her biggest buffs, like your attack boost and crit boost, again, don't happen unless your team dies, and generally heroes that operate in that kind of capacity don't do great versus bosses because generally you get a better return in your boss battles when your entire team stays alive. That's usually how it works. Um, so I would say she's not terrible in those kind of regards, but I wouldn't say she's fantastic either. She might be decent in the Aspen dungeon if she can get things to die because she'll get a little bit of a, a health boost at the end of the round. Um, either way, I'd still say She's not going to be one of your best options. Not a terrible unit, decent damage output, decent utility all around, things like the tower and such. But I'm not going to say that Starlight's going to be like, oh, you must build Starlight now, she is new, because you probably shouldn't. Um, but there we go, that's the heroes out of the way. Now we're to the fun part of the day. Oh, wait, you know what we haven't done yet? I haven't put my skin on Aspen. So we're going to do that. Ah, use, look at that. Mm, oh, yeah, baby. You're looking good. Went ahead and swapped all the warrior gear to Aspen. God, he looks so good. Oh, he's jamming. He's jamming the headbanger. Da -da 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 -da. Boom. Get wrecked on. It's Aspen's day. Um, anyways, what we're going to do today is we're going to swap out. Um, we're going to go ahead and just be naked, you Horus, real fast like. Um, oops. Unequip all of your business. And we're going to go over here to our lord and savior Bade. <laughs> Bam. The new, the 10 star, the bait. He doesn't have bad stats. I've got maxed warrior tech, so this would be a pretty fun test. Go ahead and pop all this on him, but I'm definitely going to throw in the antler's cane. And we'll read about his skills real quick, like while we're here. Makes sense, right? Pretty decent attack. Not bad. Not bad, bait. Um, but first up, his active skill has been changed. He deals 350% of his attack as damage against the enemy with the lowest HP. He has a 48% chance to deal two times the damage and a 36% chance to deal four times the damage. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> that's a lot of damage. Uh, but that's like 1,400% damage a third of the time. That's a pretty hefty hit, especially when you add in this next part here. He restores his health by 40% of the damage dealt. Not by his attack stat, but by his damage dealt. So if he hits for like 10 million damage, he's getting a 4 million HP heal, which is stupid and crazy. But also, he increases his own attack by 80% for 6 rounds. That's a lot of attack. Um, the one downside is he can't crit anymore, which is odd because the old Bade relied on crit. Also, Bade's horse is gone, so Bade's horse better come back as the new shadow unit or I'm going to be super peeved. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Benny Hoodles, he can't crit. He can't crit at all. His basic attack also can't crit. So there's no reason to build this guy with crit damage at all. Um, that's why I went the antler's cane on him. A, it's one of my best artifacts, and B, it boosts skill damage and precision, so it kind of gives him extra damage, um, so seems like a good idea. His first passive is kind of the same. A lot of people are saying, what the crap is Sunder Armor? If you look in the info button, it's just Armor Break. They just, it's translation. Things get, you know, changed in translation. Sunder Armor is just 
you know, armor break. Um, the second passive here, whenever a foe dies, when someone dies in the enemy team, he boosts his reduced damage by 40% for one round and restores his own HP by 250% of his attack. Well, if he's killed somebody with his active skill, like in the Aspen Dungeon, per se, A, he gets a huge heal off the kill, then he heals because he killed the person, and he's got a 40% reduced damage for when they attack him at the end of that round. So I would say he definitely got quite the boost for the Aspen Dungeon. I can't really reliably test him in the Aspen Dungeon right now. He's only a 10-star, and I'm in hell for the Aspen, so it might not be a very fair shake for old Bade there. Um, but also his last passive here, his basic attack, targets the enemy with the lowest HP, deals 150% of his attack as damage, with a 50% chance to deal double the damage, and a 25% chance to deal four times the damage. So his basic attack can do up to 600% of his attack as damage, which is pretty crazy. Again, he can't crit though, so you don't want to be building crit on your baids. You want to be building attack stats, um, maybe even skill damage. I got 100% skill damage now with the uh, Antler's Cane on. <clears throat> So, something to keep in mind there. Um, <clears throat> throat. Need to drink some tea. Drink some tea. Hot tea. Um, we got some uh, double attack stones here. I went ahead and pumped up to a celestial stone for funsies. Um, but yeah, it doesn't look bad. No skins. No skins for Lord Bage yet. Um, but maybe we might be able to enable him later this week for some fun testing. I don't know. We'll see. Um, you are naked right now, right, Aspen? That's not going to fly. Go ahead and pop you in with some gear. Pop you in with some gear. There you go. Everybody's looking all right now. <clears throat> throat clearing. That's how you do it. All right, let's go check out our monthly battle here. <clears throat> I got to take a drink of tea. And we're back. All right, huh? nothing like some good hot tea. Here we go. We're in our, we're in our broken spaces area. And we've got a couple things we can test on. Now, I don't think he's going to be a very good test for the wave three gold stasis. He has no crowd control resistance, plus he'd probably die. Um, so we're going to jump in here and test against wave two broken spaces. This is probably my favorite testing ground. Um, I don't know why. I just I like testing here better than other bosses. It, it just works for me. Um, but here we go. We got our team slotted in. What we're going to do is we're going to ditch the KB here. We're going to pop in. You know what we could do? Let's just run an Aura and ditch Horus for a second. How about that? Um, Cruz, get in there. So we're going to keep the Aura. Give Bait a little bit of a team boost here because we're team players. It's what we do. Um, we're going to do lower damage, obviously, with Horus not in the team, but, you know, whatever. Whatever. And, I, and again, bear in mind, we're using the Deer Monster here, which is not the ideal monster for damaging it on bosses. Um, the Wolf, I don't know if it would work better on my team. Do I have any bleeds? Horus has bleeds, so I mean, Wolf would do better for me when the Phoenix drops, if the ever, Phoenix ever does drop, if it's the same as Snake and Wolf with burn damage, then Sigmund will proc it, so it'll be pretty solid there. Um, but in this case, we're just going to run it like this with the Deer. It's, again, not optimal for damage testing, but this is the only account that I had a 10-star bait on. So, this is where we do our testing. This is where the testing must be done if um, we're going to do like normal, <clears throat> hopefully get to, oh, someone's dead. Oh, it's Cruz. Of course, Cruz is dead. Cruz is not going to last very long. We're going to speed through up to like wave eight um, to try to get the boost from Heart Watcher in. And then we'll slow things down and kind of see what Bade's able to do um, when he gets up there to that full Heart Watcher stack. So as always, 4.7 million damage hit there. But as you can see, Bade kind of tops his own health off pretty easily. And that's kind of nice. Kind of nice. So here we are, round six. We're getting up there. Here's a heal. Oh, we missed Heart Watcher with that heal. That's not ideal. I'd like Heart Watcher to be able to stay alive, so I might have to swap in like a King of Demons on her or something, unless I already have that. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. She's still alive for now, so it's all good. It's all good. Let's see. We're at round nine. Boom. Five million damage. Not bad. Not bad from old Bade. Um, bear in mind, when we tested Bade before at 10 star, before the rework hit, um, he was doing about what? <clears throat> 11 million damage total in a battle. That was like the highest number I got him to hit. So obviously not the best. Um, but now we've got him up to, you know, the new Bade. He's the new Bade. One, is that 1 1.9 million damage basic attack? That's what I'm talking about. Now, Bade is kind of RNG dependent because he does have like, there's 6 million damage there from his active skill. Um, but like I said, you know, if he does get his, you know, his whoop -de doodle big extra damage in he can hit pretty hard 924,000 basic attack that's not terrible it's not bad he does only hit one unit though and try not to compare him too hard to the e3 ada and the 10 star uh, or e3 ada i wish the 10 ada and the e3 aspen they're obviously freaks um four million damage so that wasn't a very big hit and that's gonna be the last one he does either way defeated 234 million damage not crazy not crazy but look at bade he went from dropping about 9 to 11 million damage before which 
let's be honest, sucks a big one. Up to 40 million damage, and that's not the most important part about him. Check out those heals. 11 million HP in heal. That's almost up there with Ada, which is pretty crazy. Um, so it's one of those things you might want to keep in mind there. He's got a decent amount of self-sustain now, and that's pretty cool. And again, we can't test him in things like the Aspen Dungeon, unfortunately, because we are in hell and it's not open today, so I couldn't run in and jump in and do a battle with him. It wouldn't work. Um, but maybe later on this week, I do have the ability to nine star a couple of units just laying around. Um, what I might do is I might take bait up to E2 just for funsy sake um, to get him up to, you know, having the attack boost here, um, you know, obviously for extra damage. And then even further, you know, with the uh, oops, how do you check that? Get back down here. There we go. Um, but also getting him to let me switch. There we go getting him to have this as well. So when the enemy has more health than him, he does extra 12% damage of all damage dealt. That could be pretty decent. You know, if he hits 10 million damage on an active skill, that can add another 1.2 million damage. That's not bad. That's extra damage. Um, so anyways, we'll do another battle here. Um, I think we'll just keep it with the aura the way it is. Um, but hopefully, we can get some big nasty hits with the old Bade. Because I do, I want to see him hit really hard. You know what I'm saying? Because I had a, I had a test the other day. I think right? when it just happened, I was like, got to jump in there and see what he's all about. You know what I'm saying? I can't wait to to make a video on it. But I had like a 10 million damage hit, which is crazy. But that's nuts. I mean, he heals like 4 million HP when that happens. It's just stupid. Um. So, anyways, we're gonna try this again. As long as we can keep Heart Watcher alive for 10 rounds, our damage shouldn't be too crazy different. You know what I'm saying? Like it, you know, shouldn't go like way down. Now, if Heart Watcher dies early, that is always a problem. So, you know. Hopefully that doesn't happen. We'll try to keep him going. Um, let's just go ahead and fast forward to round 10, I would say, because that's when Heart Watcher, if you guys don't know, a 9-star Heart Watcher reaches cap on her damage, uh, her mark at, ooh, that was almost 10 million. That was 9.7 mil right there, dude. Oh, and also, people were saying, like, Wrath, what in the absolute butt crack is going on with your Sigmund's counterattacks? Because he's a 5-star Sigmund, and when he counters, sometimes he hits for, like, 4 million damage. You're like, whoa, how is that even possible? He's not actually hitting that hard. Um, he's pro Ooh, There's a 10 million damage hit from the old Bade. Get in there, Bade. Poop on the souls of my enemies. Um, but what he does is he's actually procking um, Ada's like, weird little debuff. And he did it with Horus's block damage, too. And it kind of just puts all the damage out at once. So it makes it look like Sigmund's procking the damage, but he really isn't. He's not doing that much damage. That'd be crazy. Um, Ooh, at 11 million? Look at that, Bade. Why don't you just go poop on some people, please? Just poop on them. Ah, oh, I love it. The new Bade's definitely cool. 1.1 mil basic attack. That's always nice. Um, plus, he is getting that attack boost from the deer. Not obviously as good as having something like a, a Bell Rain in your team. That would be way better, obviously. Um, boop. Another 11 million damage with a 4.5 million heal, I think. That's just nuts. Absolutely insanity. Get in here. I'd love it if they could... Oh, they're going to give him another skill cast for round 15, aren't they? They are. Perfect. Go team. Boop. And here we go. Uh, 10 million damage. So the last few rounds, obviously, is where Bade gets a lot of his damage from. That was a pretty good run, though, for old Bade. 259 million damage. Bade dropping 64 million damage, nearly the same as my 10-star Ada. Bear in mind, my Ada does not have an attack-based stone on, and she can usually hit 7 to 80 mil. Um... But either way, I'm pretty impressed with the new Bade. When it comes to PvE damage and boss fighting, and even the Aspen Dungeon, I would say Bade is far more viable now than he's ever been, obviously because he sucked huge ween before, and he was kind of a meme. Now he's actually pretty decent. 64 million damage at 10 star. And this is a Bade without like a C6 stone. If I would run a you know, C6 stone with double attack, or even maybe skill damage precision, I don't know, that might work pretty well for him. Um, but also um, having the uh, the E1 enable for extra attack, the E2 enable for extra damage, and even potentially the E3 enable for um, the extra attack, uh, you know, every round, you might be able to get a bait up to 150 million damage in PVE or so. I'd definitely say 100 millions easily in the cards. So definitely way, way better than he was before. Actually a pretty solid unit. Um, I'm pretty impressed with the Bait rework. Now, he's not going to make like any kind of change to PvP. He's not a PvP unit. Um, he's not going to be like, whoa, look at this. He's the new god. <clears throat> Sorry about that throat business. He's not going to be that. That's not going to be him. Um, but when it comes to PvE, he got quite the rework. He's actually much more viable now. Plus, he looks cool. I like him.
I like the old bait, so we're probably going to upgrade this guy later this week just to kind of see what we can get him up to at good, you know, maybe E1, E2 range. And then when it comes time, if we decide, we can always regress him back to put his food into Ada and make my Ada an E3 if she ever hits the Relic Shop, which she still hasn't done, and it makes me sad. Makes me sad in my body place. Um, but yeah. I'm really impressed with the new Bade. Now, again, I'm not going to say you need to rush out and build Bade right now. He's going to be great. Bear in mind, I have maxed warrior tech. I have full warrior gear on him. I do have the Antler's Cane, which is a really solid artifact, especially on a unit like Bade that can't crit. Um, skill damage and precision plus raw attack is going to be probably one of the best artifacts for him in the game, in my opinion, because um, obviously a Punisher staff is total butt on him. He doesn't need it. Um, so, yeah, very solid artifact. I don't really know what else you might be able to run artifact-wise. I mean, anything that boosts attack, obviously. Wrong button. Boop, boop. Echo wouldn't work. I mean, class artifacts might actually work pretty well on them, too. Because, I mean, if you add just raw attack plus damage versus an art, uh, like warrior, like the Nail of Destiny here, um, if you're fighting warriors, that's a 90% damage boost plus the attack boost. So when he hits his damage, if he drops like a 20 million damage hit on him because he has the extra damage versus warrior, that's going to be a pretty big deal because it's going to heal him a lot, too. So... I'm actually pretty impressed with the new bait. I'm not going to lie about things. I, I came into it kind of expecting him to suck. I was like, he's not going to be that great. Um, but really, he wasn't bad. Um, things like this would be pretty nice for him as well. Um, attack plus attack percentage. Those exclusive artifacts that do have this, that would kind of suck. He doesn't really need HP, honestly. Um, armor break. Armor break he could use. He has 50% armor break, so bumping that up wouldn't hurt. But if you have a Sigmund, you wouldn't need it anyways. Um, but yeah, just... I think he's a much better unit now, much more fun at least, um, than he used to be, so that's cool, but I think that's also going to be it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please make sure, smash that thumbs up button, show your support, and I will see you guys in the next one.